While millions of people are beginning the new year with resolutions, only one man is starting 2011 predicting what this entire year will be like. That man is Gerald Salenti, the CEO and founder of Trends Research Institute, and he's sitting down with RT now to tell us what we can expect in 2011. Uh, my first question for you, of course, is, is about the economic crisis. Uh, while for the past years, economists, analysts, journalists, um, everyday people have referred to this as a great recession, you for many years have been calling this the greatest depression. And you say that in 2011, in this year, every citizen is going to realize it and is going to agree with you. Why is that? Because they're running out of schemes. Let's go back to 2010. The Federal Reserve of the United States, besides the $13 trillion that they in Washington lent, spent, and guaranteed since 2009, they shuffled under the table to banks around the world $20 trillion, that's with a T, dollars worth of deals. They gave money to the banks of Japan, the banks in South Korea, the banks in the Netherlands, to Credit Suisse, to Deutsche Bank, to the banks in Ireland and England. They gave money even to the banks in Canada. The Federal Reserve gave these no interest or extremely low interest rate loans to corporations such as General Electric, Harley Davidson, McDonald's, Verizon, and their buddies in the hedge fund. So we don't know these things are going on behind closed doors and the only way we found out about it is because of that one-time reporting requirement that came about from that Dodd-Frank bill that was supposed to bring about a new type of financial regulation and it really didn't. It brought back more of the same. So we don't know what schemes they're doing to prop it up, but what we're saying that in 2011, the game's gonna run out. How? We, can, we cannot imagine them coming up with another scheme where they're going to be able to continue, whether it's in the US or the EMU, to print this digital money, not worth the paper it's not printed on. You believe that this year, um, according to your trends forecast, that as times get tougher, the authorities will intensify their efforts to in extract funds needed to meet fiscal obligations. What does that mean? Well, that means they're going to try to extract it from the little people. And when I say that wake-up call, look what's going on in Europe. The people have woken up. What they call austerity measures, this is what an austerity measure is. You know that degree you have in worthlessness that you went to college for? You can't get a job. What do you have as the unemployment rate over in Europe? Well, in Spain, 18 to 26 year olds, it's about 50%. And then when you look at around Europe, that 18 to 26 year old, you're looking 30, 35, 40% of these kids unemployed with college degrees. So now, you're not going to get a job. Oh, and by the way, those services you're getting, we're cutting them. Oh, and those pensions and benefits that your parents are getting or other people are working, we're going to cut those too. Oh, and one more thing. We're going to raise your taxes. You know that education that's not worth anything? It's going to cost you three times as more, three times as much to get one particularly in England. That's why they're taking to the streets. So that's why we have on one end it's the wake-up call and the other one it's screw the people. But the people realize what's going on. That's the wake-up call. You say the youth of the world will unite. What do you mean by that? This is where the revolution is going to happen. The youth of the world have, and particularly in the United States, mountains of debt to climb and no way to get to the top. And they're seeing the too big to fails bailed out. They're seeing the gap between the rich and the poor, the widest in the United States of any of the industrialized nations. So now they have a cause because it's affecting them. So what we saw in England, again with off with their heads, what we saw in Italy with the students taking to the streets, you're going to see it in Spain, you're going to see it in Ireland, you already saw it in France, figure it out. How about in the U.S.? 
The U.S. again is going to be slower, but it's going to happen here at a different level. Remember, the U.S., the place has been beaten down and, and pushed down. You're going to see a revolution worldwide. What's going to unite them in this cause is another major trend. Journalism 2.0. The internet has become the great connector. They all know what's going on. They're all Facebook. They're all together. They have a system where they're interacting and relating. It's a different kind of social network than the other one, but the same. Cyber war, or cyber wars, you say, is going to be amped up this year. Why so? Every major country knows that cyber war and cyber crime are going to be ongoing trends for which every time they come up with a new way to stop it, a new way to get around it's going to be born. People ask me, what kind of good job opportunities are there? That's one of them, becoming a cyber sleuth. At the worst levels of any decline, jobs for those kind of skills continue to increase. The worse conditions get, the more you're going to see cyber crime, and the worse economic conditions go globally, the more you're going to see cyber wars. It's going to be a new element of warfare. It's kind of, it's a, it's an internet nuclear bomb waiting to go off. You could bring down entire financial systems, stop the banking transfers. You can blow apart without ever having to light or fuse a whole stock exchange from the FTSE to the Dow, from, from the Hang Sang to the Nikkei. Every major Every major computer connected industry or service is a potential target for cyber war. And you're going to start seeing it rather than countries putting sanctions that don't work, they'll use cyber war to bring down their enemy. And uh, do you think there's any chance of there being more government control of the internet because of the cyber wars? As the cyber wars increase, government control over the internet will increase as well. Along with Journalism 2.0, we saw with WikiLeaks, the citizen journalists, now people have their own cameras to take films of things that we only used to have film crews for, now videos instant. They want to crack down on the freedom of information. They will use cyber war as another element in the war on terror to take freedom away from us and freedom of net neutrality. And by the way, the United States is passing a new net neutrality act. Orwell couldn't have made up a better name. There's nothing neutral about the net neutrality that they're talking about. It gives government virtually complete control to put anybody out of business as Homeland Security did during the Christmas season when they said that companies violated copyright laws. You have no recourse. You're gone. You're out. You're over. And we saw it with WikiLeaks. They closed them down on Amazon. PayPal stopped doing business with them. Bank of America, MasterCard, one after another. The government's closing them down, clamping down. The greatest fear that governments have are freedom of speech and exposing the corruptness, the ineptitude, and the double dealing going on that they don't want the public to know about. So the more freedom of information that goes out, they're going to start using cyber war and the war on terror as an excuse to take that freedom of the internet away from the people. Political trend. What kind of political trend in the U.S. do you think we will see uh, in 2011? Any changes? Progressive libertarian. Libertarian in the sense of the government staying out of people's lives, but also with the government having control over issues where they can make a difference. There is a mystery trend. I don't know if you'll give it away or just give me some hints, but what can you tell me about the mystery trend? Well, there are two great trends. One is alternative energy. 
and that could be the whole game changer and that could eliminate a lot of what I've said before. Something greater than wind, solar, geothermal or biofuel. That's the big game changer because geopolitics changes as well. Countries that rely on energy as their major export, that changes as well. Would the Americans be in Iraq if their major export was broccoli and they weren't sitting on the world's second largest oil reserves? The other mystery trend, as we say, know the hand that feeds you. You're going to start seeing a lot more recalls come up from tainted food. We're going to see more and more of the organic food movement, the buy local movement. It's going to be one of the biggest entrepreneurial opportunities. 25% of the population, we estimate, is now ready to put their money where their mouth is. It's a huge trend. There's going to be counter trends to try to stop it, but at the end we see it being one of the major trends and also a whole different way of growing things, whether it's from roof gardens and as we said before, people tearing up their lawns with grass that's useless, that you can't grow to, to eat or smoke, <laughs> you're going to start seeing more and more kinds of vegetables and gardens being produced from it. Uh, Gerald Salenti, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with RT at the start of this new year. Well, thank you.